Now we're basically up on Upper Red Lake here, which is just a big shallow flat here. So we're just going through here inside imaging here. And you can see here, there's some rocks scattered in here, but I've got it at 100 feet here, but there's some small specks that right there, those definitely look like fish right there. And some more up here, but we were just talking, you know, sometimes side imaging, you know, the right shape and size of rock can sure look like a fish. And so a lot of times, especially if you have just a featureless bottom, you do have some scattered rock all over the place. Even if you don't, if you can't distinguish what's what, a lot of times that's where you'll find fish anyways. And so it's kind of a trolling paradise up here. I mean, just so much water that looks the same that we're just gonna try to cover some water here and see what happens. There we go, here we go. Oh, that's a better one. There we go. That fish hit it like it was supposed to. Yeah. I'm just gonna mark a waypoint here. Come on up. I promise we won't hurt you. Oh yeah, nice walleye dust. Need a net? Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. It's a nice eater. That's kind of what this lake is known for, is just catching big time numbers of fish. Yeah. Oh yeah, came off. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. Yeah. Get her out of the net here and show her off. Just a beautiful golden walleye. There we go. You know, that's the thing is that there's just so much I mean, there's just such a, I mean, you can go for miles and, <laughs> I mean, look how far away we are from shore. It's six, seven feet of water where we're at, but just so gradual that, in my mind, just being able to cover water with crankbaits is just ideal. Here's a fish. Ooh, there we go. That fish just slack lined it and then <laughs> there he was. Nice. Love hits like that. Already up at the top. I'm just going to bring him around in. Looks like a nicer one. Yeah. Just a good eater fish. Yeah, that's why people come out here, just catch lots of fish. Perfect fish for eating. Like, look at that fish right there. Probably about a 17 inch fish. Bring him right up to you there. There you go. Yeah. Popped out in the net here. I'll show her off here quick. Yeah, just a great fish. Oh, here. I got one on the rod holder, I think. You got one? All yeah. Right. Well, set down to help Jason net that one. And I'm it's gonna... always a good surprise when you look in the rod holder. Yeah. You got one on. All right. How's you feel? Good. You got that area marked back there? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Got two fish in a pretty short amount of time. Yeah, we did, and this one feels nice. Good. I'll get the net here when you're ready. Yep. Ooh, yeah, here it is. Yep. All right, I'll get the net here for you. Yeah, this is a little nicer one. Yeah. I'll get on the other side of here. There we go. Nice. nice. That's a good fish. I'll just lay them right there for you. Yeah. So that's a nice 18 inch class Red Lake walleye. Get her back in the lake. We're not keeping any today. These guys are lucky. Nice. That's fun. Especially when you're not even ready. You look back <laughs> and it's on in the rod holder. <laughs> yeah, can't beat that, huh? You know what that means? I might be moving my bait around too much in my hand. Sometimes the rod holder catches the Sometimes, fish. Sometimes, yeah. There's a lot of things to experiment with. We're just trolling crankbaits here today. What we found is we're just covering water and uh, a lot of times I'll do this just to, uh, if you're side scanning, looking for the biggest pot of fish, it's a great way to cover a lot of water and, and find active fish. And here on red, it seems to be like if you find the right depth, like today we're in that five to seven feet and these fish are real scattered and we're finding these little rock fingers that come out and, and uh, just covering water and getting active fish has been very effective today for us. Fish on, I got one too. You got one too? Yep. Double? Got a double. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> well, we're into them now, huh? 
<laughs> we yeah. thought, well, we could find them, we could maybe jig them, but I don't think we need to. We just keep reeling them in. <laughs> yeah. Man, mine feels, mine's not budging. I got about a 16 inch. I'm just going to ski mine in here quick and we'll deal with yours. This is a fun place. Yeah. All right, what do you got? Right there. Oh yeah, nicer fish. Oh, Sorry. where are you coming here? Right there? Come right there for you. Yeah, oh yeah. There we go, nice. It's nice and easy, you just cast them with the spinning rods, you just cast out. Well, it's so fast, right? I mean, it's efficient fishing when you're shallow water. Yep, a lot of time, I think, think time gets wasted when uh, you have to let all that line out. Another nice 18 inch. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like that? that? Fish didn't like captivity. <laughs> no. So here's what we're doing. This here's a bait called the Rumble Shad. Okay, it's a balsa bait, which I really like balsa early in the year. I think it gives it a little bit different action. And you see here, this is what I like the most about this particular lure. It's got that narrow bill design, but you can see here it's really got a thin taper at the edge. And so we call it shaving the bill. A lot of times we take a file actually and do that to baits, but doing it ourselves, we'd wreck a lot of baits, but that thin edge on that bill really causes bait to really flutter and roll in the water. So a lot of times when we're popping this bait, you just see it just, it just flashes, just like a real shiner. But that's the Rumble Shad from Northland Tackle. And these baits have been just hot. I mean, they're hand tuned. They just catch fish. Red Lake, early spring, there's just a lot of fish. So that's what attracts the people here and you get to keep some fish. So, and they're the perfect size keeper fish. There's a lot of 15 to 20 inch fish in this system. So it's a great place to come and uh, get yourself a limit of fish and, and it's pretty easy and you can typically pick any way you want to do it. So if you want to hone your skill at jigging or you want to do some trolling like we did today, this is a great place to come and just go through a lot of numbers of fish. Oh, there's a fish. Ooh, that looks that like fish a good one. Hit it, huh? <laughs> yeah. I love it. That was uh, I watched that go down. <laughs> yeah, that was a strike. <laughs> These fish are getting a little madder. You know, just another good eater. You know what? I'll just lift them right in. We're not eating them, I guess. So if they get off, they get off. Oh, come here. Nice. That's the bait. Yeah, just just gorgeous fish. And you just you look at like a 16 to 18 inch wall. I mean, that's just a perfect eating fish. All right. And here's why we're using a spinning rod versus a line comber. That's all fast you're fishing. <laughs> so, and I tell you what, like on a lot of river systems and stuff, you know, typically, you know, you think of trolling spots, you think of big spots, you know, spots where you need a lot of room, set up your line counters. Oh, there's another fish. Got another one, Dusty. That fast? Yeah. Oh my. But you need room to work and it takes so much time to let line out. Whereas with the spinning rod, it's just immediate. It is so fast. I am gonna hit another waypoint up here though. There we go. I think we found them. I would say. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is good fishing, huh? Yeah. Thank Pretty you, crazy. Sir. You're welcome. There we go. It's that rumble shad that's been doing all the damage. Yeah, just great fish. It's a shame releasing so many fish like that. That'd be a great eating fish right there, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know, you look at all the places that we travel to, whether it's the Dakotas or Wisconsin, Minnesota, by far, if there's a state where we see fewer people trolling crankbaits, it would definitely be Minnesota. Trolling is probably something that's underutilized or overlooked at times in the sense that you know, whether you're using one rod or two, it doesn't matter. When you need to cover water and just 
you know, where, where it feels like these fish could be in a lot of different places. Trolling enables you to cover water, and also, too, when fish are shallow and they're scattered out, trolling is a great way to contact fish and just, and just catch those aggressive fish. And so don't overlook trolling, especially when these fish are scattered in shallow water, like what you often see on Red Lake. Trolling is a deadly technique that catches a lot of walleyes. You know, so we're trolling about two miles an hour, which is just a nice average trolling speed just to cover some water. You know, you know and we're not putting the rods in the rod holders. You know, we're holding on to the rod, which, you know, a lot of times in the shallow water, especially early in the year, I just, I think it's a big advantage just kind of giving that rod tip a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a stop, and just work that lure a little bit. It's almost like you just feel those fish coming in and, you know, and just, you just feel them pushing on it, you know, and I just feel like, uh, Especially when things are tough, and I think holding onto the rod and working it, you just catch so many more fish. Even casting cranks, you can cast and reel and catch fish, but if you work that lure a little bit, there's a lot of days where that's the ticket. Oh, there's one, other one. I finally think I got the right color, Jason. All right. It's got a little shine in it. Yeah, just a lot of activity. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> it is. Oh yeah, it's a nice walleye. All right, I'll get the net there for you, sir. You know, when it comes to shallow water fishing, you know, you're less than eight feet of water. This isn't rocket science in the sense that, you, don't, you know, if you're not using a line counter reel. I mean, you know, before we had line counter reels, you just let out line until the lure hit the bottom hard, and then you reeled up a little bit so you didn't get snagged. It's still that simple. Nothing's changed. And so I think sometimes what happens is that people get so enamored with having to use a line counter reel, having to know exactly how many feet of line to let out, it's not that complicated and I tell you what if you can get by without a line counter reel when you're fishing shallow there's a lot of advantages you know that we just touched on you can get the lure out much quicker you can hold on to the rod and pump the rod you can get the lure in and out fast and it just it opens up a lot more areas because you know let's face it trolling spots are big well if you can set up in a very sh short amount of time you just expand the number of areas that you can troll and so Spinning rod, hold on to the rod, pump the rod when you're dealing with shallow water early in the year, especially with cold water. I feel like that is an important tip that can help you catch a lot more fish. You can test too when you're running crankbaits out here is, is you slow way down to like 1.5 or you can speed it up to two, three miles an hour. You know, we noticed today on some of our turns, we were getting uh, more bites. So that tells you right there to either speed up or slow down. So I think you let the fish tell you. Oh, there's a fish. Golly, I mean, you can't go more than 50 yards. <laughs> no. This is something. Less than that, in some spots. Let's see what we got here. Need a net? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, that's a better one. There we go. Thank you, sir. Yep. You want to try to side scan the fish? but it wasn't necessarily the easiest today because of the amount of rocks we found in here. So the fish were hanging around the rocks, so we were pretty confident that's where they were. And we did scan some in the sand. So a combination of both and covering water. And then when we started catching fish, we made sure we just circled that area. When it slowed down, we moved out, found another area, caught another group of fish. Ooh, there we go. Got a good one? Yeah. All right, hang on. <laughs> Man your battle stations, huh? You know what, I think this is the right kind. Oh yeah, this looks like a nice walleye. I'll get the net here for you. Okay. See if it wants to come up on my side here. Yeah, it is. There we go. There we go. That thing hit like a freight train. <laughs> For a smaller fish, he's got a lot of, a lot, a lot of, of spunk, huh? Yep. I 
I'd be a perfect eater. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Again? Yeah, they bend the rod over, I'll tell you that. This would be just a perfect place to take kids out, you know what? Yeah. When, this doesn't get any better. Oh, we kind of got a kid with you today. Well, yeah. <laughs> feel like a kid, right? Do this. That's a nice walleye. Should we net this one? I guess like all the rest of them, they just fight hard. Yeah. Another nice one. Yeah, they're chunks. Healthy, beautiful looking fish, huh? Yeah. That fish even came off in the net, so you gotta love that. One big thing about Red Lake is this is where a lot of the shiners come from to supply a lot of the bait shops up here. So these walleyes, you know, move in to ambush the shiners, uh, much like most of these northern Minnesota lakes. So basically what we're doing is we're imitating a spot-tailed shiner and these fish can't resist, especially after the spawn. You know, they've got the feed bags on and, and these shiners offer up a fatty little meal for them to just gorge on. So if you can mimic that in any way, like we are today, having some sil silver in our crankbaits has been one of the keys. Yeah, that's been, that's been the best for us. And I think when we pump these things once in a while, we're imitating that, that shiner. If you ever watch them in the water, they make like a flash and then keep kind of swimming. Flash, swim. So this crankbait, it's flashing. You know, you pump it a little bit, ticks off the rocks, and they're, oh, thought I had one. But there you go, like just one subtle little movement and that fish is following it. It wants to pin that to the bottom like a real shiner. Come oh, back. Oh, oh, oh what it again? Goes look at to that. You. Look at that. I get them, <laughs> I get them lured in and then you hook them. <laughs> this is a better fish, you know? Oh, good. Oh, yeah, here she comes. There oh, we yeah. Go. Yeah, just great fish. Yep. Yeah, this is fun. A lot of fun. I mean, this is something too. I mean, you don't have to have fancy electronics, you don't have to have a lot. I mean, just a crankbait. Six, seven feet of water, go till you find them. After you find them, keep turning around on them. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that this isn't complicated, sophisticated, technical fishing. This is something that anybody can come out and do. And for a lot of people, you know, they you know, grew up fishing with a jig and a minnow. If you want to get confidence with another presentation or want to get confidence trolling, <laughs> I can't think of a better place to do it is right here. Hands down. Red Lake. Goodness, to catch a boatload of fish like this, that's good stuff. I'll just let her go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Acting like a walleye pop us out of gear here and we'll just kind of coast along here. Oh yeah. He just got that nice golden color on him too. Yeah. That water's just got enough steam where, oh yeah, great walleye. Really nice fish. Hey, oh yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> nice. All right. There we go. That's a great fish here. We'll show this girl off. Yep. You know, that's probably worth pointing out too. You know, Red Lake isn't known for big numbers of big fish. I mean, every once in a while you'll hear of a, maybe a 27, 26 inch fish caught. There's a lot of nice fish in the low 20s, but I think people come up here because there's just, I mean, you've seen it today. I mean, there's just stupid numbers of just 15 to 20 inch fish, you know, and you just catch a lot of fish and every once in a while you get interrupted with a bigger one. What's there not to like? Yeah. Get that rumble shad out of her. Or look at that. Yeah, just a great walleye. All right, we'll get her in the water here. Oh, well, <laughs> this is some impressive fishing. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I can see why this place is so popular. You know, a lot of people come up here. It's kind of a thing where 
You have Lower Red Lake, Upper Red Lake, you can't fish on the reservation, but people come up here early in the year, warms up quick, just a great bite right away. I mean, just big numbers of fish. A lot of people assume that a lot of these fish will pull out of Upper Red and go into Lower Red as the summer progresses, but I tell you what, it's just a kind of a, just a hit list every year where if you just need a fix, if you just want to catch a bunch of fish, it's definitely a place where you can just come out and do it.